what happens if you take a hoppy beer and distill it? Will it make a nice whiskey? What about the hop oils, the bitterness? Will it ruin the still? Will the flavor get into the still and you'll never get it out? That's what we're gonna find out today. How's it going chasers? I hope you're having a kick-ass week. I'm Jesse and this is Still at the Channel, all about chasing the craft of home distillation and making it a legitimate hobby. So today we are looking at beer guys. Can you distill the stuff? So cheers. Uh, this is actually not the beer that I'm distilling. Uh, this is Panhead, a, a pretty awesome New Zealand APA. The beer that we're using is in fact an APA. It is, you know, fairly substantially hopped, although it's not dry hopped. So for those of you uninitiated, it means it's hoppy, but not crazy hoppy. It does have a bit of bitterness. Um, and essentially it's a beer that didn't quite work out the way that it should have. Uh, honestly, it's, it's not bad. It's pretty decent, but it's not amazing. So here's the deal team. I had 70 liters of this stuff and it was just under 5%, so not a large ABV. So I took 40 liters of the beer, popped that into the still and run a stripping run. Honestly, nothing special about it. I just ran it through hard and fast to cut the volume down. I, I then took those low wines and added them back into the still again, along with the remainder of the beer. And uh, this time I distilled it with two plates. Now I know when when you look at the still it probably looks like uh, three plates but the bottom one there is is there just to make up you know height on the still so that I can get to the bench easily on the other side so this is the first time that I've actually run with a D flag uh, and it is a little bit of a balancing act between you know the the, the vapor speed with the, the amount of power you're putting into the boiler and then the amount of coolant that's going into the D flag honestly I don't have the greatest setup right now I'm still doing a workaround for this crappy water situation we've got at the moment So these are the jars that I got off the still. I did collect into individual jars. Uh, I'm not gonna go into a full tasting sort of notes on everything that happened during the run because there was honestly nothing that surprising to me. So this is what I decided to keep, guys. And after making those sort of selection process and what I did want to keep and what I didn't want to keep, uh, the product came out at a little over 80%. So I've proofed that down now, down to 55%. So I think we should have a taste. What do you reckon, guys? Like I said guys, 55%, it's not crazy high, but it is relatively high. Uh, and I've done that ahead of time because that's, spoiler alert, I'm gonna stick wood into this. Um, that's the, the ABV that I think it's gonna be best at. Oh, people have been asking me uh, where I get these little tiny wine thieves from. Uh, dude, they're not wine thieves, they are stainless straws and they are the best things in sliced bread for doing like little tastings like this. Especially if you don't, you know, want to be using plastic. Why am I filling that as well? I need one. <laughs> uh, and the great thing is guys, they're pretty damn cheap. So I'll stick a link below, um, an Amazon link below if you're interested in them. You can check them out there and see if they're right for you. Uh, the next step up from something like this, honestly, is uh, the guys at Balconis had an adjustable uh, pipette. So you can be like, oh, I want four and a half mils of that, thank you. And then I want two and a half mils <laughs> of this for blending, it's awesome. Uh, I haven't got one yet, but I think I am gonna get one. I'll, I'll stick a link for that down below as well. Anyway, all right, let's have a taste of this. So the first thing I notice off the bat is there is something in there that reminds me of beer, not whiskey or white dog or whatever the hell you wanna call, you know, a spirit that's made from grain. <laughs> And it doesn't smell like beer, it reminds me of beer. And I've been struggling for a long time to put my neck, like to, to really dial in what it is. It's not a straight up hop character. Not a hop aroma because a hop aroma, um, when you're smelling it as an aroma is quite bright and floral or fruity or zesty or, you know, any one of the, the, the sort of hop characteristics that you can get. That's not it. It's more vegetal than that. But it is related to hops. It's, I really can't put my finger on it. It's like, um, it's like hop, hop stock, <laughs> almost. Like it's got this vegetal umami, like vegetable, you know, like literally like a, a vegetable soup stock kind of thing. For ages, I thought that it was tailsy. 
because it's similar to that. It's similar towards the wet cardboard smell, but I don't think that's it. And then underneath it, you've got the grain character. And instead of being, you know, like beer grain character, it's once again, it's, it's, it's deeper, it's darker, it's grungier, it's less bright. You know, when you're drinking beer, you've got that carbonation too to lift it as well. And it does, I have had some beers that have this flavor that I'm trying to describe in it. And it isn't great in beer, I'll be honest. And it's not something that I've ever run across in whiskey. In whiskey, the only whiskey I've had it in or spirits I've had it in are spirits that are distilled from beer. I have had commercial uh, examples of, you know, it, literally this, like a, um, one of them I've got is a Pilsner. I've had one that's made from pale ale before. I've had some from stout. And they've all got this flavor in it. It's weird and it reminds me of beer. It reminds me of, um, like if I left this beer, like if I drank it down to here and left a little bit in the bottom of it, left it here overnight and came back and smelt it tomorrow, it would be like that. It's kind of like an oxidized hop and an oxidized caramel malt got together and had a dirty love child. <laughs> It's in somewhere like, like hops that have almost gone cheesy and um, yeah, I, I don't know, it's bizarre. And it's not necessarily a bad thing, like now that I've been spelling it for a little while, I'm, I'm almost enjoying it. It has a really fun um, grain sweetness to it and I, I honestly wonder if that comes from the fact that these, that the beer isn't fully fermented out because I get that on a lot of you know, these products, once again, things that are made from beer. It has an awesome sweetness, not like a wood sweetness, not a vanilla, almost like Ali like Ali Me <laughs> is actually what it is. Like malt made from grain. That's the sort of sweetness that I get from it. There is also an impression of bitterness there too. And I can't tell if it's that part of my brain that is saying this reminds me of hops, you know, must be bitter or whether it actually is bitter. I don't think it, it's not actually bitter, but I think there is a flavor there that is very often associated with bitterness, especially in beer. Now that I'm tasting it like this, I don't think I've ever really disassociated that flavor from the actual bitterness in beer, because they almost always come hand in hand. Hold the press, I gotta stop you for a second. Mrs. Stillett just saved the day. I gave her a sample, asked her what she thought it was. She couldn't figure it out. She said she kinda liked it, kinda didn't, but didn't know what it was. I told her what it was and she said, oh yeah, that smells like when you used to brew in the house. And that is exactly what it is. It, it, it smells like when you first put the hops into a boil when you're making beer. That's what it smells like. You know how that doesn't, smell like beer. It's got that weird like hot break thing going on. It's kind of um, soupy and umami-ish, but still reminds you of beer because that's what it is. That, that's exactly what it is. Would I recommend making this? No. <laughs> yes, I, I don't know. It's not like any uh, good whiskey I've ever had. And every time I have any sort of spirit that's made from beer with hops in it, I am always left feeling this way. I'm left feeling like I don't like it, but I can't tell you exactly why. And I've had some spirits made by people that I know make good product. I love their other products. <laughs> and it's not that they're made badly, it's just that I don't like it. So that is a personal, I'm gonna put a pin in that guys and say that it's a, a, a personal preference thing. It's, a, it's an, a, perhaps an acquired taste, perhaps something that I will grow to like in the future, perhaps something that is going to get better with age and with wood going into it. I'm thinking um, with that sort of perceived bitterness thing going on, with the sweetness up front, with that lingering sort of vegetal umami hopness to it. I think I'm gonna go with French oak for this, but I am going to char it really heavily. So that's the plan for this product. What about the still? Come on guys, if you've been in the home distilling world for any amount of time, if you've been reading forums and those sort of things, God damn, that is actually growing on me. <laughs> I can't make my mind up. I really, I, I don't know. Anyway, if you've been in the forums for any length of time, you would have seen people ask about distilling beer and you would have seen people say, don't do it, you'll ruin your still. Um, the hot oils are gonna get stuck in the still, you'll never get them out and everything will end up tasting like, you know, like beer that you make from there on in. I was happy to put my still on the line and test it for you guys because 
you know, for science. So here's what I did. As soon as I finished distilling this stuff, <laughs> I literally just opened the drain port up on the bottom of the still, drained everything out, filled it up with 20 liters of water and some faints that I had kicking around, up to about 6% ABV in the boiler and then started running it. Like I didn't clean it, I didn't rinse it, nothing. Like there was still um, chunky bits sitting around in the bottom sight glass from an almost puke I had on the spirit run beforehand. So this is like the first drops that came out uh, after I did that. And this smells pretty heavily like this. And to be honest, it doesn't smell good. It smells like tailsy and funky and weird. That, that smell that I was saying is almost like tails in this is really concentrated in that. In fact, that's the thing I pick up most. All right, so after that, I ran another 500 mils of this and then took another sample, which is this. I'm not gonna drink that because, you know. Now this smells more like this, but a lot more subtle. and tastes pretty similar to be honest. Uh, but I can, I can smell and taste uh, a little bit of wheat and I think some of the molasses from one of the runs I did. You know, it's a different base spirit, but I can definitely still smell some of this. This is about 250 mils later on down the track. I think I can just pick up some of it, just a, just a little bit of it on the nose. Flavor wise, it is just there, but I'm, I'm, I'm losing all of that sort of funky, almost tails-like thing that I've got going on here. Uh, after I did this, I drained the still again. I gave it a rinse out and I let everything fall out because remember these are bubble plates, right? So the stuff that goes up, once it hits the plate, it doesn't, you know, come back down entirely. So what I wanted to do was flush all of that out, like rinse it with water all the way down, load the still again. Once again, 20 liters of water and a little bit of this other stuff. Uh, and that's what this is. This is, um, I took, you know, the, some crap off the top and then I'm left with this. And honestly, I get absolutely nothing. Like, it, it's, it's not even related to this stuff. And that was almost no cleaning. Like, a, it, you could call it a rinse and a half-assed uh, alcohol sacrificial run. Like... Not even, like I didn't even run it past here. I just stopped there because I was like, oh, that's pretty clean. And I, uh, and I gave up. So to go back and answer those first questions, you know, we had right back at the beginning of the video. Can you distill hopped beer? Hell yeah, you can. I just did it. Like you can't tell me I didn't. I, I, I distilled it. I got an alcoholic beverage out the other end of it. You know, full stop. I don't think there's any way you can argue that point. <laughs> Is it delicious? Can you make it delicious? up to you really there's there's no major thing that changes from distilling anything else it's sort of distilling things that are going to taste good for you to distill your product your way all of those things that you know we hold dear uh, and sort of champion in the home distilling world and i hope that i've shown you that you really don't need to stress too much about you know messing your still up i mean sure maybe you, you you know, use a little bit of those faints you've been holding on to to run a, a sacrificial run. You know, it's going to take you half an hour, an hour, whatever. Um, give it a go. Maybe you'll love this stuff. And ever since my wife told me that this smells like brewing, you know, like brewing in the house, I'm suddenly a whole lot more partial to it. Like I can put my finger on what it is now and it's become more meaningful. Just realized I need to swap that gasket out. Yep. <laughs> It is so good to be back distilling again, even if it is a bit of a weird workaround. We're gonna be doing a whole lot more of this coming up soon, guys, so um, buckle up for that. I also need to say a huge, huge, huge thank you to these Patreons, guys. These are the people that make this stuff you know, possible. So if you do find value in these videos and you would like to ensure they keep on happening, feel free to jump on over to this link here. That's my Patreon page. You can just suss it out and uh, see if it's the sort of thing that you would like to sign up for as well. So I hope you guys had as much fun watching this as I had making it because it was an absolute blast. Uh, if you liked the video, please guys, make sure you give it a thumbs up. That does a whole lot of good. 
in 2020 on the YouTube world. Uh, also, people have been complaining about not getting notifications on YouTube. I'm sorry guys, there's, like, that's just out of my hands, that's the algorithm. If it is a problem for you and you do want notifications, uh, please sign up to the Stillit newsletter. You can do so on the Chase the Craft website's homepage. And uh, I send out a couple of emails a month sort of summing up everything that's happened. Anyway guys, keep on chasing the craft. I'll catch you next time. See ya.